OJ, I want to throw a couple of names at you, uh, some well-known athletes, modern day, who are portrayed in, by, in uh, a less than flattering light in the media for, for various reasons, and just ask you your thoughts on them. Uh, Barry Bonds. I, you know, I think Barry Bonds may be uh, the most misunderstood of all the major superstar athletes because the people who know him, and like the San Francisco fans that know him, they know that, Merc, I mean, that, that Barry's a good guy. You know, Barry's good to the fans. What Barry's problem is, he hates the media. The media has burned him, and uh, I don't know if he if it's his fault he didn't handle it well in the beginning, but he's developed this antagonistic thing with the media, and it's the media that tra- that portrays him to everybody else. And unless he one day decides to do a show like I did on MM1 mm-hmm. uh, and, and talk to the public about his feelings, uh, but the, Barry has always been good to the public. Barry's got a good heart. He's a nice guy. You, when you see him talk, he's a nice guy. His problem is the media. And since he has a problem with the media, they portray him as a bad guy. Isn't the key there to differentiate? Because, uh, you know, you and I seem to get along pretty well. I don't know if you're that way with every member of the media. But when people have asked me uh, since the first time that we had you on what I thought of the interview, I said, well, the best thing I can tell you is he answers all my questions. No. And when we talked the first time, I mean, we got very, very in-depth no. about no. Uh, everything that happened in the trial. So, I mean, is is his greatest downfall, Barry Bonds, maybe the fact that it's it's one is the same as all of the others when it comes to the media? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I ain't, I'm not gonna call it a downfall because you got it's what you feel about yourself, and he yeah. seemed to he seems to have a, some good self esteem. Yeah. I mean, some good feelings about himself. Uh, but yeah, maybe that is a problem because uh, you know that old saying that you shouldn't let one apple, one bad apple, ruin mm-hmm. the whole barrel. Uh, but in his case, I think it has his earlier experiences, negative experiences in Pittsburgh. I think with the media, has uh, he sees them all as well, all in one one cloth, you know. Jose Canseco. You know, I, I, I have trouble with Jose uh, in that I'm just not a believer that it, whatever your problem is and whatever um, um, illegal or whatever thing you've done in the past, you don't then turn your friends in, you know. Mm-hmm. And obviously a lot what he said is true, but to me that's very, uh, you know, I, I, I don't believe in the mob thing that you're a rat, but in, in many ways uh, – I just don't believe that it was his place to talk about what the other guys, uh, that, that he, in many cases, encouraged them to do. It wasn't like he was in court and had, the, you know, it was a, 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 had a trial that was going to keep him out of jail. He did it for money. He did it for profit. Now, you know, if he was in court and they asked him the questions about this guy, this guy, and this guy, I guess he would have had to have told. But it wasn't under those uh, circumstances. It was under, uh, let me make some money by selling out these uh, guys who I guess at some point was his friends. And, and Michael Vick. Well, you know, I mean, I'm I, I can't tell you how I feel now because I'm I'm too wrapped up about him personally mm-hmm. because I don't know Michael, but I'm too wrapped up in the fact that I I, I feel strongly that he's uh, he's he, this is America and he's not getting uh, due process. I think the media has already convicted this man. I don't think this guy could ever. I don't care what happens in court, ever get the stigma. Uh, of this off him, I saw when ninety percent of the people felt he was guilty last Thursday, and that was before the the real federal indictment that we mm. know exactly what the case is. Now I got dogs, you know, so it's it just I, I I remember my dog while I was riding my bike, and two uh, mastiffs came out and jumped on my dog. He's kind of a semi miniature shepherd, and it was like they were jumping on my kid. Right. So I can't imagine a dog fighting. It's hard for me to see him. I I, I know early on. The story was like he, he he has houses that he bought for his families to use, and I know dog fighting is prevalent, prolific all over the United States. So, I mean, some things are cultural, and he I I can uh, I can even see him if he grew up with it going to dog fights. I read a thing that in Georgia, even though this is Virginia, it's not illegal to go to dog fights. It also is not illegal to raise fighting dogs, but it's illegal to fight them in the state of Georgia. But uh, I, I, around the country, so if he just went to dog fights, I find it a, a curious um, uh, um, likeness, you know, something for him to like. But when I see these guys catch fish, when I'm turning the channels and they catch it and they take the hook out and they show it and then they 
try to act like they're sportsmen and humane by putting it back in the water. I said, they just tore, tore up the whole guts of that fish. How long is that fish going to live um, uh, after that? But a fish doesn't have the personality that dogs have. You know? Well, just but, last week, you know, I had the president of the uh, Atlanta NAACP on, and uh-huh. we were talking about this very thing because what he was saying, my position on it has been to let those sponsors know that if he is found to be yeah. – uh, uh, possessing knowledge of this operation or running this operation, hold him accountable then. But I, I do feel like you need to add that caveat and give him his day in court. The president of uh, process, yeah. Due now the process. the president of the Atlanta NAACP was saying, well, if you do that, if you notify him, even if you give that caveat and you say, well, give him his day in court, uh, they're not gonna they're not gonna read the fine print and they're just gonna jump to that conclusion. So I think there's kind of a philosophical difference there. But I think the problem is is that people feel like they're you know it's like I said you're, you first you, the first thing you think of is your dog. First thing yeah. I think of is my dog. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with kids. Yeah. I mean, and you know what somebody said to me recently? They said, uh, you know, so our American society will forgive all but two things: crimes against children and crimes against animals yeah. Yeah. because of that innocence. Well, I mean, I, I as I said those first couple of days, he didn't seem to have any support. Mm-hmm. Even I, in my Bronco ride, even I on my acquittal, if you saw sunset and the overpasses, the vast majority of those people were cheering. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw nobody cheering for him, so I was kind of glad that you know there's a group of people that that came out today uh, uh, there to support him. But I support due process, and uh, to me, if there was ever a case that uh, has been been so tainted so early that due process may be impossible, finding a jury uh, uh, that's not influenced by the, what they already know or already heard is the 